Good day, guys. Today, I'll be discussing some exercises on the delta epsilon proof of the statement limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to L. So proof of limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to L using delta epsilon definition of limit of a function. That is, given any epsilon greater than zero, we need to find a delta greater than zero such that if the absolute value of x minus a is between zero and delta, then the absolute value of x, f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Proving the limit statement limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to l consists of two parts. First, preliminary analysis, that is finding an appropriate delta that will work on this conclusion. Second, we have our formal proof that is showing that the chosen value of delta really works. So let us have the following examples. Using delta epsilon definition of limit, prove that the given prove the given limit. Number one, limit of three x minus five as x approaches two is equal to one. Here, we identify a to be equal to one, two and L to be equal to one. So given any positive epsilon, we need to find a positive delta such that if the absolute value of x minus a, our a is two, is between zero and delta, then the absolute value of f of x, so that is 3x minus five minus L, L is one, so minus one is less than epsilon. So first step is to find the appropriate delta. So find an appropriate delta. Note that the absolute value of 3x minus 5 minus 1 is equal to, so finding an appropriate delta, that the technique is to work backward. So let's work on this left side of this conclusion and trying to express it in the form of x minus two, absolute, absolute value of that. So getting three x minus six, absolute value of this, and this is equal to absolute value of three times x minus two. 
but the absolute value of a, a, a product is equal to absolute value of the first factor times the absolute value of the second factor. So hence, this is equal to absolute value of three, that is three times the absolute value of X minus two. And we want it to be less than epsilon. So hence, X minus two is less than epsilon over three. So it is reasonable to take delta to be equal to epsilon over three. Actually, any uh, delta that is less than epsilon over three can also be chosen. So second, do pa second part of our solution, we have to show that so this is now our formal proof. Show that delta, which is equal to epsilon over three works. So from our premise, the absolute value of X minus two is between zero and delta. This implies that the absolute value of X minus two is less than delta. Now, since our goal is to get this conclusion, so we have to express X minus two in the form of three X minus five minus one. So in order to do that, we multiply each side by three, getting three times the absolute value of X minus two, and that is less than three times delta. And I can insert this three inside, getting absolute value of three times X minus two, and that is less than three times delta. And this three times X minus two, I can express this in the form of three X minus six. And we know that Delta, the chosen value is epsilon over three. And from here, three X minus six, I can express that as three X minus five, which is our F of X, then minus L, that is one minus one. And that is less than epsilon, which is what we want. Okay, guys, since we are able to express this premise uh, in the form of three F of X minus L absolute value of that less than epsilon. So we get it from this hypothesis then we can conclude that the limit of um, 3x minus 5 as x approaches 2 is equal to 1. Okay, guys? So this ends the proof. So let us have the second one. Let's say we are given limit of the absolute value of one minus three X as X approaches two is equal to five. Here, we take A equals two and L five. So given 
any epsilon greater than zero, we need to find a delta that is greater than zero such that if the absolute value of x minus a, that is x minus two, is between zero and delta, then the absolute value of f of x, that is absolute value of one minus three x, minus L, our L is five, is less than epsilon. So again, let's work backward. So meaning from the conclusion, let's find an appropriate delta. So find an appropriate delta. Okay, guys, can you follow? Okay, so note that the absolute value of abs of one minus 3x minus 5 is equal to um, abs of abs of 1, I mean 3x minus 1 minus 5. We do this because we know that x is close to two. And if x are values that are close to two, abs of one minus three x is a positive, this inside expression when we have three x minus one, three times two minus one, making it positive, okay? Convenient to handle. And this is less than or equal to um, abs of 3x minus 1 minus 5. Okay? So that is using what? using reversed triangle inequality. So from reverse triangle inequality, we have abs of, abs of A minus abs of B that is less than or equal to abs of A minus B. So meaning abs of 3x minus 1 minus b, our b is 5, okay? Since 3x minus 1 close to 2, that is positive. And this is equal to three times x minus two, because when multiplied, this is three x minus six, and we know that negative one minus five is negative six. So getting three x minus six, okay? So we let this absolute value of three x, minus two to be less than epsilon. 
because you want this to be less than epsilon, let's let's force this to be less than epsilon. So, and this is three absolute value of x minus two is less than epsilon, okay? So hence, absolute value of x minus two is less than epsilon over three. Okay, guys. So again, from here, so we have absolute value of abs of this minus five. So since absolute value of one minus three X is the same as absolute value of three X minus one, then we can write this as abs of three X minus one, then minus five. This is our A, abs of A, and this is our abs of B. So, and the abs of A is 3x minus one, and the abs of B is five. So we have, and this uh, inequality is less than or equal to abs of A minus B. This is our A and this is our B, okay? And this is equal to what? This is equal to three times abs of x minus two. Since we want this to be less than epsilon and this is supposed to be less than or equal to this. So let's force this to be epsilon, okay? So if we force this to be less than epsilon, then this uh, absolute value of x minus two will be less than epsilon over three. So, let's see if this delta over, I mean, epsilon over, over three will work you know, as a value of epsilon. So meaning we take what? We take delta to be equal to epsilon over three. And of course, any delta that is less than epsilon over three will work also, okay? So you can choose also any delta that is less than epsilon over three. So let's see if this chosen delta works. So we have absolute value of x minus two is between zero and delta. So this implies that absolute value of x minus two is less than delta. Let's multiply by three because this is our goal. This, so let's start multiplying by three. So we get three times abs of X minus two, and that is three times delta. And this is equal to three times X minus two, abs of this, that is three times delta. And we know that this product, abs of this product is absolute value of three X minus one minus five. And this is less than three times epsilon over three. And this is equal to epsilon. 
Okay. But the abs of abs of three x minus one minus five is less than or equal to abs of three x minus one that is abs of b minus a I mean a minus b sorry a minus b rather so again abs of abs of three x minus one minus five is less than or equal to abs of a minus b okay so again this is our abs of a and this is our abs of b and this is our a and this is our b since when x is close to 2 uh, 3x minus 1 is positive and this is what this is less than epsilon okay from here so this is less than epsilon therefore this is less than epsilon this abs of abs of 3x minus 1 minus 5 because this is less than epsilon coming from this asterisk so this is asterisk is less than epsilon so so we say, we conclude that this um, left side the extreme left is less than epsilon okay so again this implies that abs of abs of 3 but this abs of 3x minus 1 is abs of 1 minus 3x from here we know that abs of 3x minus 1 is the same as abs of 1 minus 3x so minus 5 so it's less than epsilon okay so since we are able to express f of x absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon then therefore we say that the limit of abs of 1 minus 3x as x approaches 2 is equal to 5. So this ends the proof. Okay. Can you follow guys? Okay. So let's have number three. So let's say we're given limit of 2x squared minus 3x plus 5 is equal to 10. As x approaches, let's say, negative 1. So how to show that this is true using delta epsilon definition of limit? So again here, A is equal to negative 1 and L is equal to 10. So given any positive epsilon, we need to find a delta greater than zero such that this statement is true. Zero is less than the absolute value of x minus a. Our a is negative one, so it is plus one is less than epsilon, then
the absolute value of f of x that is 2x squared minus 3x plus 5 minus L, L is 10, so it's less than epsilon. Okay. So again, the first part is to determine an appropriate delta. So find a delta. So before um, finding the al the delta, let's simplify this inequality. This inequality, e, when simplified, is absolute value of two x squared minus 3x minus 5, okay? So, and that is less than epsilon. So, again, note that this, but I will be using the simplified form, uh, 2x, absolute value of 2x minus 2x squared minus 3x uh, minus 5. And this is equal to, so the technique is to work backward, huh? so that you will able to find the delta. So um, what makes difficult in proving limit statement is finding delta, but proving it is actually easier, but mm, finding the delta that will make this true is what makes it difficult. So the absolute value of 2x squared minus 3x minus 5, and this is equal to, so let's factor inside. So x plus 1 times 2x minus 5. So that is the factored form of this quadratic. And this is equal to abs of product is product of absolute value of x plus 1 and absolute value of 2x minus 5. Um, we know that x plus 1 from the hypothesis is less than, this is less than Um, delta, no? Since we want our um, delta to be small, because remember, x is closer to negative 1. If x gets closer and closer to negative 1, so delta is mm, actually small, okay? Now, to keep x plus 1, absolute value of 1, to be small, meaning to be less than delta, which is a small one, we have to maintain 2x minus 5 to be small, okay? Or retain uh, at least, uh, at, at most, 1. Because if this is 1, this will not alter the value. Or if this is less than 1 but greater than 0, of course, much better. Because you will be able to keep this absolute value of x plus 1 times this to be small, okay? So to maintain this product to be small because we want this to be small this absolute value of x plus one so we need to bound this and we will and to bound this we are going to choose our uh, x to be within within one away from this negative one from a a is negative one if we're going to choose our x to be 
uh, at most one unit away from negative one. So this will be what? Will remain small, okay? This absolute value of x plus one. So meaning less than delta and delta is small. So again, let's bound. absolute value of 2x minus 5. So we want what? We want x near negative 1. So we choose x within 1 away, within 1 unit away, from negative one, okay? So of course, less than one will work also. Let's say within one half, within one fourth. For convenience, let's take within one, unit away from negative one. So we take delta to be equal to one. So again, for any delta less than one, one half, one fourth, one, one eighth, and so on. So taking delta equals one, so we have x plus one, absolute value of that is less than one. So from here, we're going to uh, derive the bound for 2x minus 5, the upper bound, an upper bound for this. So for this expression in say to be 2x minus 5, we begin by multiplying by what? By um, by 2, no? But first, let's simplify this without absolute value. So we have this absolute value of x plus one less than one is what? Is equivalent to negative one less than x plus one less than one, okay? This inequality is equivalent to this. So remember, if we have absolute value of x and that is less than b, this is equivalent to negative b is less than x and it is less than b for b that is positive, okay? So we have this for b greater than zero, okay? So multiplying its part here by two, so we get negative two is less than two x plus two and that is less than two. So for this to be negative five, I'm going to add in the middle um, positive what? I negative, we have to add negative seven, no? If I add negative seven here, this is now two X minus five, but I have to add seven also here. So plus nine, again, we add seven to its part, negative, sorry, negative seven rather, negative seven. Okay, guys, and this is what? Negative five. So this is negative five, and this extreme left is negative nine. Am I correct, guys? And if I'm going to take the absolute value of this, so it becomes nine greater than abs of two X minus five, and that is greater than five. Again, taking the absolute value of its part will change the direction and the extreme values at the left and at the right side, both be become positive values, okay? So, because I take the absolute value of each, but take note that 
this change, no? This notation changed to greater than, from less than to greater than. Or equivalently, this is 5 is less than absolute value of 2x minus 5, and that is less than 9. And this implies that abs of 2x minus 5 is less than 9. Okay, guys? So, the abs of x plus 1 times the abs of 2x minus 5, so, is less than what? Is less than, so this is abs of x plus 1, and this is what? This is less than 9, so I multiply this by 9. This is now greater than this left side because 2x minus 5 is less than, that absolute value is less than 9. Okay? So we want this to be this product, which is actually this, this product is absolute value of 2x squared minus 3x minus 5, meaning this is abs of f of x minus l, we want this to be less than epsilon. So let's force this to be less than epsilon. So we let abs of x plus 1 times 9 to be less than epsilon. Okay? So if we force this to be less than epsilon, then this is less than epsilon. Okay? So that abs of x plus 1 is less than epsilon over 3. Get it, guys? So we can now take delta here to be equal to epsilon over 3. i sorry. Epsilon over 9. Epsilon over 9. Epsilon over 9, rather. Uh -huh. You know, it's hard to look at the screen because the screen has a small um, size or area. So again, take delta to be equal to epsilon over 9. So or any, of course, any delta that is less than epsilon or equal to, no? less than nine, epsilon over nine, you can take also aside from delta over, I mean, epsilon over nine, you can take delta also as less than epsilon over nine, okay? Now, from these two restrictions, we have two restrictions for delta. So we have what? We have two restrictions. for uh, delta, and this are epsilon is equal to, I mean, delta is equal to epsilon over nine, and we have another one, epsilon is less than uh, one, I mean, equal to one. Delta is, delta is equal to one, and delta is equal to epsilon over nine. These two restrictions can be written as delta, which is equal to the minimum of these two values, 1 and epsilon over 9. Okay? So again, those two restrictions can be written as delta equals the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 9. So... What does it mean if let's say if I choose del epsilon to be nine and I will get out of the open interval centered at negative one. This is the center negative one and this is the open interval containing negative one but not necessarily defined at negative one. It's because X is not really negative one. No? So we have, this is our, 
uh, negative one minus delta, and this is our negative one plus delta. So let's say I chose epsilon to be nine. If I have nine over nine, it's okay because it's equal to this. But what if my epsilon is uh, 18? 18 over nine is two. So it will be out of this, this interval, okay? So because uh, we want it to be uh, not really out, but we want it to be smaller than the two. So if this is more than more than one, so we will be choosing one. But if epsilon is greater than, epsilon over nine is greater than one, so we're going to choose one. Enough, close enough to negative one, okay? So because you remember, we want our delta to be small because if delta is more than one, so it is far now from negative one. But if we, uh, if, um, delta is at least at most one, it's, it's still close to negative one or any number that is less than one. So that is by choosing epsilon to be, let's say epsilon is one, that is one over nine, epsilon is two, still okay. Epsilon over nine is, let's say epsilon is uh, one over, uh, let's say the value of epsilon over nine is let's say one over 18, one over 20 and so on. So we have to choose this, but if this is greater than one, so we have to choose one, okay, to keep this uh, interval is small, okay? So meaning to keep our x to be really close to negative, to negative one. So we now have here, The second part, let's see if the chosen delta, delta which is equal to the minimum of one end epsilon over nine works. So we know that zero is less than abs of x minus negative one, and that is less than delta. And this implies that we have abs of x plus one is less than delta n to x. This delta actually, uh, we have less than epsilon over nine and two X minus five is less than nine, okay? And this, when multiplied to, multiplied by abs of two X minus five, if I multiply, this by absolute value of 2x minus five, and that is less than epsilon over nine times what? Times nine. This is less than epsilon over nine. This is less than nine. Therefore, this product is greater than this, or this is less than this this is less than epsilon over nine, and this is less than nine. Therefore, this product is guaranteed less than epsilon over nine times nine, okay? But this absolute value, this product of absolute value of x plus one times absolute value of two x minus five, two x minus five is equal to, 2x squared minus uh, 2x squared, I mean 2x, let's have 
x x plus one x plus one rather to x minus five absolute value of this and this is less than epsilon and we know that this is what this is uh, absolute value of 2x squared minus 3x and then plus 5 and then minus 10. And that is less than epsilon. So remember this. So if I go back to here, this 2x squared minus 3x minus 5 is the same with 2x squared minus 3x plus 5 minus 10. And this uh, absolute value or this expression inside is actually x plus 1 to x minus 5. So hence, we say that this abs of x plus 1 to x minus 5 is the same as abs of 2x squared minus 3x plus 5 minus 10. Therefore, since we have shown that this uh, f of x, absolute value of f of x minus L is less than epsilon. We say that the limit of 2x squared minus uh, 3x plus 5 as x approaches negative 1 is equal to 10. Okay? So that ends our proof. You see? So actually it's easy. What's uh, really difficult is uh, finding a delta, satisfying the what? That will make this true. Okay? And of course, bounding, um, like for instance, in this, bounding this quantity. This uh, 2x minus 5. Let us have number 4. So we have limit as x approaches 3 of 1 over x is equal to 1 third. So here, we take A equals 3, L is equal to 1 third. Okay, guys? So given any epsilon greater than 0, we need to find a delta that is positive such that if the absolute value of x minus a is between zero and delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So let's work backward to find an appropriate delta. By taking note that this abs of one minus x, one over x minus one over three is less than epsilon, okay? So, but let's first simplify this. So this is equal to, if you get the LCD, that is three minus X over three X, then abs of this. But this is equal to abs of 3x in the denominator, in the numerator that is abs of uh, 3 minus x. 
but we want it to be abs of x minus 3 no? as our reference here. So let's express this as this since this is equivalent to this or equal to this. So I can write this further into abs of x minus 3 over and abs of 3x is 3 times abs of x. Okay, guys? So we are going to bound this denominator abs of x or three times abs of x. So how to bound this? So you have to be careful no? because one over x has an undefined value. That is when x is zero. So when you choose or stipulate delta or you want to have your distance of x to be, to be close to, to the center three, be sure your distance will not cover this value of x that will become zero, okay? So let's check the interval because we might, uh, when we stipulate, we might uh, cover x equals zero in the interval. So open interval, if this is the center negative, I mean positive three, so can we stipulate at most one or um, so one because you want it to be close. So let's have it at most one because having distance two, it's a bit farther, no? Let's have a distance from three, one. So it is four here and three minus one, it is what? It is two. So it will not cover, no? Actually you can have at most, you can take, Delta can take, can take at most what? At most, um, at most three. Because if I'm going to add three plus three, it is six, but and three minus three, it is zero. So you have at the boundary. Remember this is an open interval. So if this is zero, so, and this is, uh, six is still, we don't cover the zero. So at most three, you can take delta, okay? But of course, a better choice is one. So let's choose delta or, or take delta to be equal to one. Again, you can take two, you can take three, the delta. So, but better to take it one. Up, after all, it will not, uh, it is smaller and will not cover what? Will not cover uh, x equals zero. Can I take one half? Of course, the better actually. But con for convenience, I want it to be one, okay? But at most you can take three, but more than three, not anymore. So let's say 3.1, 3.2. So you can no longer take that because it will cover now x equals zero because if I subtract from three, mm, more than three, so it will exceed what along the number line x, it will exceed the, the zero, no? So it will be less than zero. It will cover x equals zero. Okay, guys, we do not want to cover zero. So this is what we are avoiding. So let's put that here. That's what we want to avoid. This is one one and this is zero okay guys and this is what we do not want so our interval if we choose this so this gives us what give us interval uh one uh, sorry two to three two to three Oh, wait a minute, it's uh, saving, I think. So, and this gives us interval two to three. This is open interval. In 
interval. Ayan. Two to three. Okay? And as a check, uh, no, sorry, two to four, no? Two to four. Two to four. This is the interval. Let's make it color so that we can really see it. So this is the interval. It is two to four. Let me correct that. Okay. And where X, of course, is not equal to three. X is just approaching three. And to check, and to check. X equals zero is not an element of two to four. Okay. So X. So okay here. So that's what we try to avoid. So um, we know already the the delta mm, that is one restriction so that we can bound this absolute value of X. So we know that X minus three from the hypothesis is less than so delta, but our delta, which is it to be one. And this is equivalent to negative one less than X minus three. And that is less than one. Let's multiply by, let's add no? to, to make it just X in the middle. So we have plus three, so that is X now, plus three on the right side. So that is four and plus three here, that is positive two. Okay, guys? And I want this to be three X. So we have to multiply by three. So if we multiply by three, multiply by three, we get to what? We get six and this is less than three X and that is less than times three, no? 12. If I take the absolute value of this, so no change in the direction, it's still, this is still true, no? If I take the absolute value, so we have abs of three is three times abs of X. And that is, less than 12. This inequality is still holds. Okay, guys? And if I take the reciprocal, so this will become what? If I take the reciprocal, I will now have one over six is now greater than one over three times abs of x. And that is greater than one over 12. Or this is what? Uh, one over 12 is less than one over three times abs of X and that is less than one over six, okay? So this implies that abs of uh, one over abs of three one over three times abs of X rather is less than one over six. So this quotient abs of X minus three over three times abs of, of X is now less than abs of X minus three over what over six? So since one over one over three times abs of six is less than one over six, so it means one over six is greater than one over three times abs of x, and this left side is less than this. So meaning this right side is greater than this. Okay. So. I can take now, so I can take delta to be equal to what? 
to be. So again, because we want, we want this to be what? We want this to be less than epsilon. So remember this quotient is equal to what? This one, this quotient is equal to abs of one minus one over X minus one third. So this is what? This is this part. Let just me let me just write. This is what abs of uh, one over x minus one over three. This is equal to this, no? Yeah. This part. Okay, guys. That is equal to that. So, and since this is equal to this, and this is less than this, and we want this to be less than epsilon, so let's force this to be. Now, for this to be less than epsilon, let us let's force this to be epsilon. So we let let abs of x minus three over six to be less than epsilon, so that abs of x minus three is what is less than epsilon over six. Okay? Yeah. Okay, guys. So I can take now, I can take um, delta to be equal to six times epsilon or again, or any delta less than six times epsilon, of course, can be chosen. So let's now, um, write the, the restrictions. How many restrictions do we have? We have two restrictions, right? Hence, we have two restrictions. So the two restrictions, can be written, delta equals as what? Delta equals minimum of one end epsilon times six. So if six times epsilon is greater than one, we choose one. If six times epsilon is less than one, we choose six epsilon. So that is what it means. So let's see if this wor works. Show that delta, which is equal to minimum of one and six times epsilon works. So we know that the abs of x minus three is between zero and delta. So this implies that abs of x minus three is less than epsilon over I'm sorry, uh, three, six times epsilon rather. And from the stipulation of delta equals one, we have abs of three times, abs, I mean one over three times abs of x is less than one over six, okay? Now, this implies that if I multiply abs of x minus three by one over three times abs of x, and this is less than six times epsilon times, this is, this is less than six times epsilon times what? One over six. So this is 
um, less than six epsilon. This is less than one over six, so the product is less than six times epsilon times one over six. Okay, guys? But this is absolute value of x minus three over three abs of x, and that is less than epsilon. And we know that this quotient is actually one over x minus one over three abs of that, and that is less than epsilon. Okay, guys? So here, or from the simplification that we had before, that this is equal to this. So we say that this is equal to this. So hence, since we have, we are able to express abs of f, f of x minus L less than epsilon. So we conclude therefore that the limit of one over x as x approaches three is equal to one third, okay? So that ends our proof.